Welcome everybody to this uh, webinar, the first one in quite a while that I've given. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to present to you the new Excellence Reports framework. And um, yeah, we start on time. So probably a few, uh, few users or few um, people will join us later, but um, we will record it. So let's, let's get started. So um, today I've planned to give you a short introduction, and then after that uh, we'll have a look at why, you know, why we needed to build a, a new reporting framework. Like basically, what's wrong with the existing ones, and um, and then in the end, obviously, we have the, the most important part, which is the demos, uh, two demos that will show you the capabilities and and features of of Excel Wings reports. So. Uh, first things first, uh, just a few points on housekeeping. Uh, usually, yes, people are asking whether or not the webinar will be recorded. So yes, it definitely will be recorded. Uh, I will upload it to the Excel Wings YouTube channel after the after after this live session. And um, definitely, if you have signed up on on the webpage or if you're here from the uh, the, the meetup pages, then I will post the link there or send around an email with those um, with the link to the recorded video. You can ask questions anytime in, in chat. That may be the easiest option. I will get to them um, whenever I can. Most likely I'll just wait until the very end of the, the presentation. Um, yeah, during during the, the the course of the meetup or or the webinar, it's probably best if you meet yourself, and um, if you want to ask something in 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 person, that's absolutely possible. So then, just unmute yourself for asking the question, and then last uh, last point on this list, I'm assuming you know a bit at least around you know your way around Excel, Python, and Excel Wings. If not, then maybe you want to drop out and get an idea first and then and watch the recording later on. But I'm pretty confident that you know um, enough to be able to follow the, the webinar here. So uh, as an introductory slide, um, I just wanted to give you some background on, on, on why uh, some of the reasons why I came up with the reports framework. So basically, I started to work on, on Excel Wings in 2014. That's quite a while ago. And for the first six years, I just handled it as an open source project. And uh, well, at some point I just you know realized that um, there was a, mitch, a mismatch between the time I was putting in and, and basically the, the amount of dollars that, that came out of it, which is completely normal for a, an open source project. And the other thing I learned about at that time, which is, was like two years ago, was that most of the Excel Wings users, they're using it um, at least amongst other things for some sort of reporting purposes. And that wasn't originally the, um, the, the reason why I built it. The, the, the reason originally was that I wanted to have access from Excel to Python's um, basically scientific ecosystem like NumPy or Pandas. But at this point in time, uh, we made a little survey and I got also approached by other users who wanted a better framework for reporting. And so basically at this point, you know, I asked myself, well, either I just let it, let it abandon, I abandon it, um, you know, what happens to so many open source projects, or I find, or I try to find a way to fund the, the continued de development and, and, um, maintenance of the project. And so two years later, um, we're on a call here. So you can probably imagine which path I decided to take uh, two years ago. And uh, before we, we get started with the actual topic, I just want to mention that I also wrote a book last year. So it just came out a couple of months ago. It's basically about Excel Wings, but not only. So it only covers here. Um, in the last part, it covers Excel Wings. It accounts for about one third of the book, about a hundred pages, and then two thirds of the books. Uh, two third of the book is basically uh, split on on the other topics, which is an introduction to Python, an introduction to Pandas, and also then an introduction of all the other popular Excel Python 
packages um, to give you sort of a you know a quick start. If if it's especially for people who are new to Python, um, who want to get a quick start and, and maybe a bit of a better um, didactical um, uh, means than than I can give in in the documentation of Excel Wings. So um, yeah, if you're interested, definitely have a look at the at the books page. And that's about it for the introduction. So I was mentioning up front, so what's wrong with reporting? Um, what's the current status? Um, what options do we have? If we would like to create uh, PDF fact sheets, let's say for our fund, uh, what options do we have? And so obviously, you know, uh, the title is a bit misleading. So obviously there is nothing nothing wrong with these um, other options as such. It's just that, they have their own use cases, and often that may not overlap with producing a weekly or maybe daily or, or monthly fact sheet for your report. So uh, a popular solution is, is Report Lab. It's, it's, for example, also used in, in Wikipedia for downloads. It's awesome. If you have a web service or a, a website where you need instant instant creation of, of, of reports, but there's a lots of, lots of code to write and that you know gets you in the corner of, of slow development and you definitely need a Python developer um, to always do changes on your reports. Um, then, you know, then there's a, basically the, the HTML based uh, route you can take something like Plotly Dash. Uh, the good part about this approach is that basically the code and the design can be uh, done by two different people. So you basically um, work in the HTML or CSS world, but the uh, sort of, you know, the, the, the bad news there is that not a lot of portfolio managers or analysts are very strong front end developers. So there's a bit that that mismatch um, in between skills. Then um, there's definitely a lot of people probably try to use a, a BI tool like Power BI to come up with a, a, a report. Um, BI tools, they were definitely made for interactive um, dashboards, web-based dashboards rather than PDF reports. So what I hear from users is it's difficult to create beautiful um, beautiful tables, for example, and often you're lacking connectors to, to get your data into the report. So maybe you have an internal system and to connect to that internal system, um, you need to have a, a, a rather expensive um, contractor maybe who writes a specific connector for this. And then uh, lots of people are using uh, Excel together with Word and, and PowerPoint. That's usually not my favorite part of doing things just because it's very error prone. You don't really know, has it you know, updated or not? There's actually a couple of um, add-ins that you know, uh, supposedly solve this issue, um, but very often you end up having more than one template. Um, let's say you have 10 funds that are using all the same uh, report. Maybe you then have end up having like 10 different Excel workbooks. Um, it's not it's not the best way to manage um, to manage these these different uh, reporting needs there. So there's definitely a bit of a an error proneness in in there. And then last but not least, you definitely have the desktop publishing, which also has its place, but probably more for something like an annual reporting and not something for a, a PDF report, which may you know, change over time and where you need to quickly react to um, maybe, you know, changed changed laws, you need to add a new disclaimer or something like that. So, um, and this is usually then in the hand of a professional reporting team. So nothing like, like a portfolio manager or an analyst can handle themselves. But again, as a, as a summary, nothing wrong, obviously with all these solutions, they just have a, a, a spot which may not overlap with the typical um, business user who wants to create a PDF report in an automated fashion. Now, there is obviously Excel Wings, um, the open source version, and I mentioned it initially, uh, lots of people are using Excel Wings for precisely that purpose of creating Excel reports and eventually also PDF reports. So what's wrong with that? So there is, um, first of all, if you have one um, here, one basically data, uh, type of data that you need repeatedly, and in this case, it's just a, a string, it's just text, uh, you basically have to 
you know, go through a couple of loops or you need to assign it to a couple of different, different cells. So you end up with a picture like the one on the right hand side. And now imagine that um, what happens here is basically you get into a maintenance nightmare. So basically, you know, at some later point, you decide that um, it, it would be a good idea to give your report um, a title. So you basically introduce insert two rows here which means that you need to go back to your uh, to your python code and uh just you know replace or fix all the occurrences that are below those two inserted rows and so that means that uh, you always need to to do changes in your python code as soon as your excel template changed and that's just a hassle to go back and forth especially if somebody else um you know maintains the template they're always dependent on the Python developer. And so how does Excellent Reports um, get rid of this issue? What's, what's the value added here? So Excellent Reports basically offers you a new function, which, which is called create report. And all it needs is basically the, uh, the, the path to a template file, and then a path to a report file, and then it accepts these keyword arguments, which is basically the data that you want to stick into the template. And as you can see here, on the template side, um, you are then able to use the variables as placeholders by putting them into these double in between these double curly braces. And so instead of having to like send over the um, name argument here, uh, like three times, you just send it over one time and the template user can use them as often as they want. So you don't have any loops, you just need to send over the data once. And that, you know, simplifies a lot of things already. But obviously the, the, the best part about this approach is that if you do the same operation as we've done on, on the previous slide, you insert two rows here, then nothing else has to change. So you literally just change the template and you don't have to go back to the Python code and, and bring it in line with the changes manually. Um, but you can literally just do the template changes and, and you're done. And that definitely has the advantage that um, a Python developer you know, may set up the project for you, uh, for you, which I mean the, the end user, the business user, and you don't necessarily need to go back to the Python user for a very long time. And so basically uh, to, to summarize what, 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 what Excellence Reports does is it, it separates the, the two worlds. So we have here on, on the left-hand side, we have the, the Python world, the developer, the, 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 you know, the developer who writes Python code. And then on the right-hand side, we have the, let's say, business user who may not necessarily um, know how to write Python code. And they can uh, work on the template here in Excel. They can use the placeholders. Um, they can do changes. They can apply formats without having to being dependent here on the Python developer. And then the Python developer has the advantage that they can do whatever they need to do to get a hold of the data. So often they will do database queries, they will load CSV um, files and so on and so forth. We'll have a look at this in, in, in just a minute in, in the demo. Um, and since it is Python, you know, it, it, it just practically allows you to connect with about everything you need to. And then um, after the fact, so after the, uh, the, the, the reports have been built, it's as easy again for the Python developer to do the, pro to, to the sorry, to do the post processing. And by that, I mean, to basically do with the, the, um, the, the reports, whatever they need to do. So often people are sending them around in um, weekly newsletters maybe, or um, they are uploading it to the web server from where their users can then in the end download those PDF fact sheets. So for the first demo that we're going to jump into right now, I am going to basically focus only on the right-hand side. So for a moment, uh, we are all just business users and we can forget about uh, writing code and the Python users on the left-hand side. And we will get obviously back to that a bit later on during the demo. So in, in this first demo, I'm going to uh, talk about placeholders, how they work. I'm going to talk about filters, and I'm also going to talk about 
frames. But instead of going uh, through this here on a sheet, on, on a slide, I'm obviously going to show you this, how, how it works in, in the real life, um, again, from the perspective of a business user. So as a business user, I know that, um, you know, one of, the, one of the data tables that I have available is called holdings, which is probably, let's say, the, the holdings of your portfolio. And where that data comes from in the end at this you know, point in time, it, it doesn't really matter. For the demo here, it comes from a CSV file, but it could come from anywhere really. So this little demo here is, is really just about showing you how um, these placeholders, how, how the magic here works. So I'm, I'm putting here uh, the placeholder in between double curly braces. As a business user, I just click on, on basically the button that either, well, I have here, I'm using the one from the Xlong Z in here, but it may also be a specific macro button that uh, the developer gives you. And that's actually what we're going to see also in the second part of, of the demo. So as you can see, um, uh, I'm actually for this demo here to make it a bit easier to follow. I'm actually not using different workbooks, but I'm um, just copying the sheet and have the placeholder filled in. So as you can see, um, this, this pastes the, the holdings that we have in that order that we get it from the original source, which is nice, right? So that's pretty much how it works. And so if I go back and I say, okay, you know, the case that we've just looked at in the presentation and I wanna add a title here, then I can do that and I'll just click the button again and things still work. So there's zero code change I need to do in, in this moment. Now, I was talking about filters and filters are a very powerful way for the, the business user to have an influence or change the way that the data arrives in Excel. So on the left-hand side, I'm doing the same as we've just done. It's just a placeholder, raw, and, and you know, in the same way as the data is delivered to me. And then basically I have two samples here where I do use filters. And so filters are being separated here by the pipe character. And you can probably you know, tell what those filters are going to do. So first of all, uh, we're going to sort in descending mode on the fourth column. And the columns here are zero based. So this is actually gonna be, um, if we gonna have a look at the table here, so that's gonna be the my zero, one, two, three, and fourth column. So sorting on the fourth column means I'm sorting by the weight here. And then I'm taking the head, which means I'm taking the, the top five position, which then ends up, you know, delivering the biggest five positions. And so in classic um, Excel Wings uh, open source package, what happens is that if, if you want to do the biggest five positions, then usually the business user will go to the Python developer and say, hey, um, can you just you know sort it and give it back to me, the top five positions? And um, then the Python developer does that, has a new um, target where, where they paste that, um, that table. But in, in Excellence reports, that is all doable in a very easy and intuitive way from the user themselves. So let me just click the button here to see what's, what's going to happen. And as you can see, it looks to be quite all right. So we start at the 7%, which is the max here in the table. Um, and then we cut off after the first five rows. And then here is the same for the smallest positions. We just uh, basically took it the other way around. So we just said um, sort in ascending order. And so that's that's really easy. So like, um, you know, even somebody completely new to, 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 to that, how it works, they can probably figure out, okay, if I wanna uh, change this to, let's say the, the 10 biggest positions, then I'll just do this, uh, change the number and um, ready they are, and they don't need to go back to the Python developer for this. So that's uh, generally how the filter filters work. And we're gonna meet uh, quite a few other filters in, in the second part of, of this demo. And so to, to conclude, basically the first part here, um, I'm going to show you how frames work, what frames are, 
And um, they are basically uh, a means to divide the, the layout into uh, different columns. So you often see um, that you have like a left part and the right part, like a classic two column layout. And that's what we are essentially going to do here. So first of all, frames are defined by inserting a comment, um, a note here with the frame marker. And then they just, you know, um, go on until they hit the next frame marker, which is here. So in this case, we're just um, dividing the uh, uh, the report into two vertical columns, which is this one and that one. And then basically within frames, we have a dynamic location of the uh, basically of the space. So instead of you know having to know how long uh, the holdings table will be, we can just use, for example, um, I'm using the table tables here. So I can use tables to, to format my table and Excel tables. Yeah. And um, this basically just requires me to, to have the, the header formatted and also here a row of the table. And I can use these banded rows, as we can see in a second, this will be very um, helpful. And then what Excel wings within the frames will do is it will expand these tables and move them downwards or move the, you know, the, the content which comes below the table, move them down for as much as, as it needs to be. And also make sure that the table gets formatted um, for as many rows as you have. So yeah, let's just see how this reacts when I click the button here. And as you can see, uh, we do have uh, uh, three perfectly uh, formatted tables. So uh, they they stop at the last row of, of the table. They have these banded rows, which are just um, making things very easy to read on paper. And as you can see here, um, well, the, the, the text is moved down below this table, but this doesn't impact um the basically the the you know the um the splitting of the real estate here on on the right hand side so this is like how you can independently have um dynamic tables align in a multi column layout and i mean that is pretty much already it like the very basic components of how Excel Wings reports of, of how the framework works. And as I said previously, I mean, this is like through the lenses of, of a business user. Um, they really just need to know what, you know, what, what's the data called, and then they can start off and design their tables and have powerful filters to um, influence the, the behavior or the appearance of the data they wanna present without having to write Python code. Now, the uh, second demo is going to be a sort of a, a full reporting pipeline. So um, I'm really going to, to show you a, a, a complete sample of how things could look like if you have to prepare uh, re reports or fact sheets on a, on a regular basis. And um, we're going to basically go through the, 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 full, the full process here. So we're uh, really um, including this part here, the, the, the data acquisition, we're going to fill in, produce the, the Excel and the PDF report, something we skipped over for right now, the PDF part. And then we're actually going to upload that part to the um, Excel wings uh, web page um, in 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 life. So basically, uh, yeah, we're going to have a, a a few samples here. We're going to take care of of a few different sample sources like text, uh, Word, CSV files. Um, we're going to have a look at how pandas can can manipulate them, but mostly then we're going to see how we can produce uh, professional looking PDFs out of this Excel uh, template here. And then most importantly, yeah, well, not most importantly, but then like to, to really finalize the whole process, we're going to upload those generated PDFs live to the xlinks.org homepage. And so, yeah, let me actually now switch to the other demo here so we can close this one. And there it is. So. This again, let's stay for just a few more minutes on basically the side of, of a business user. 
who you know just is responsible for pre- producing these fact sheets and we're going to take care of understanding you know what happened in the background after basically the show and we we can look a bit at the code we can look a bit at the different components that are involved and how um you know what's what's really happening behind the scenes but for now let's just have a look at this little application here it's it's a classic again a classic excel wings application we have the famous run button there's not much more on 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 this application than that we have a few um, settings down here so this tells me yeah i want to have three sample funds that i'm going to produce Uh, i want to create all of them and uh yeah open the pdf for me so i can you know instantly look at if if they um if they look good and then also at the same time upload the pdf to my web server so yeah let's see how it goes so um Clicking the run button will start the whole process. So you can follow here. It's now behind the scenes, basically in a hidden Excel instance, it's filling in the template. Now it's uh, generating the PDF out of it. And you can see the PDF here coming up um, on the right-hand side. And and meanwhile, it it moves on. It uses the same template and fills in uh, my font B here. And... um, then uploads the font B in the end to uh, to the web page, and meanwhile it's it's doing the third one. Um, so we do have the third one here, uh, which has been created and also uploaded to to the web page. And so just to to show you where that is on the web page, um, you can basically follow along. So if everything went fine, you just go to xwings.org, you go to the reporting tab, and then um, you can download here one of these fonts and as we can see here um, that should probably have today's date and then down here um, we have the timestamp that we've just run so as you can see here it's 27 now so that was from a minute ago and you can do the same on your side so this is really um, has been uploaded by the tool to the live web page of of excelwings.org and and that's just like how the you know the full cycle comes together and uh yeah so at this point i guess it makes sense to have a, a quick look at, at at this pdf report and then sort of break down a little the, the different sections and and explain a little bit better um what happens uh behind the scenes and so for that i'll go and um make the PDF reports may be a little bit bigger. So to basically start at the end result. So right here. So I'm going to uh, switch between these two reports. And you can already see that basically they are completely the same. They use the same header and, and footer here. It's just fund A and fund B. They have different data. So one starts in 2018, one starts in 2016 for the um for the historical performance here. And then again, we have these dynamic features here. So you can see what I previously demonstrated. We have these two frames. So we have a a frame here on the left, uh, which is just text. And then we have a frame here on the right, which allows you to have these dynamic tables. Um, As you can see, accordingly, the uh, chart which follows below the table is, um, you well, is is uh, switch uh, is is um, shifted up or down depending on how many rows that table has, and then you can probably also see that um, the, the the QR code is is dynamic. So the QR code basically um, points to a specific uh, font uh, to a font specific URL, and um, because it's Python, that's also just as easy to do because there is obviously a package that creates these um, QR codes for you. So you can easily um, introduce these QR codes in, 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 the, in the report. And so, uh, yeah, so that's sort of like the, the big level, the high level picture of, of what happens or what you can do on these uh, reports. Now, obviously very, very interesting is probably how like, what what's involved how does it look behind the scenes and so it's probably best here to to start in the folder here and and see what files we do have so 
Um, basically, we have the reports folder and the reports folder is where all the PDFs ended up with. And also we have the XLSX folder. So in the XLX fo XLSX folder, we do, we do have the reports in the original Excel layout. So basically, as you can see, this is uh, how they look. What they are missing is the header here, uh, or maybe the footer here on on the second page. The you know the logo. Um, I will explain in in just a minute uh, how this is done. But for now, this is just basically explaining or showing you what's inside the different folders. So reports is basically the output. That's what we are producing by clicking um, on the left-hand side on, on the run button. Now, how do we get there? Obviously, uh, a very, the, the most central role is lies in, in the template file. And the template file is nothing else than basically what we have gone through before, like in the you know, introductory demo. So I have for each page of the report, I do have placeholders on my file. So for example, uh, here I do have the fund name, which will be provided by the Python code. And I also do apply, I mean, you, you will see like throughout the template here, we have a couple of more filters that we use. For example, here, I just use the font color uh, filter to turn it into a white color. Um, I could also use alternatively, you know, Excel's capabilities of just painting it white. Uh, the issue there is simply that then it sort of disappears on screen. So it makes it very hard to, to maintain. So there's a couple of these, um, well, filters that can make your life easier. Um, as you can see here, for example, I'm using a variable called as of date. That's just basically the current timestamp delivered by Python. And then I can use the date time filter, which will format things in the way that, that we have seen, which, which is in, in basically the date um, format. Let me just, uh, for, you know, purposes of, of, of comparing things. Let me just open this on the, on the right hand side. So you can see here the August 12, 2021. That's like the default formatting if you go for the daytime filter. But then below, and probably I should make this a little bit bigger. So below we have the as of date, as you can see with the um, slashes formatted. So month, day, and um, two digit year. And Again, the nice thing about using here the, um, the reports framework means that we can just uh, reuse, okay, that was a bit too much. Uh, we can just reuse those placeholders. So I don't need to tell the Python developer to give me, you know, uh, for each version of, of a date formatting, uh, three different date strings. I can just tell them, give me the current date and uh, the way that I want to format them is up to me. So I can just use the date formatting rules here and um, you know be my own boss of, of how I want to have things formatted. Then on the left hand side is the uh, basically the placeholder for the introduction uh, for the text that you can see. Let me just see here. Um, basically the, the text here that you see on the left-hand side. And you can see it's a text that's uh, formatted. We have basically a green header here. We have um, text that is um, bold, etc. And then, you know, by doing this, we can also look at the other side. There is also text um, which has like a, uh, a year in it. It's also bold and so on and so forth. So, uh, the, the canonical way of dealing with uh, working with text and, and uh, using um, reports framework here is to, to write things in, in markdown text. And so I have two samples here. Uh, one is using one for the disclaimer is just basically a standard text file, which is just formatted as a, as a markdown uh, Markdown file here, um, and as you can see, uh, we have the, the the double asterisk here to make a bold, um, make the words bold, and then again we can again use the same as of date and format it. Um, take out the year component here, and this will make sure that no matter you know 
when you format these reports, they will always have the current uh, year and they won't show like 2020 when in reality we are on, already in 2021, which is a common thing you can see here. And then the other thing um, we saw like when we downloaded the, um, the report from the web page is basically how you can insert the, the timestamp here. Again, this time I wanted it to include the hour and the minutes and the seconds. So um, that's just a, an easy way to reuse uh, every every variable without having to have any extra work. And then some people I know they prefer to work in in Word because you know the grammar and the spelling is is already double checked there, and that's what they are used to. So that's perfectly fine too. Um, and in fact, so this is the text that goes on the left hand side. So you can see again. Um, you just use the hash to, to mark it as a title and then basically the corporate layout as you define it in your, in your Python code then makes it turn into a, um, into a, a green header as, as we previously saw on, on these, um, on the reports here. So that's basically uh, the, the power of, of working with text here. Uh, you don't have to have people, uh, you know, do some cumbersome formatting. Um, you can really just have them use Markdown and then Excel Wings takes care of formatting that Markdown properly. Uh, let me see. So that's 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 pretty much uh, most of the the, the the important things here. So uh, the, the demo here works in such a way that the font specific data is taken here from CSV files. So if you would add another folder here with CSV files, then that um, demo app would produce another report. So instead of three reports, then it would. Um, uh, produce a fourth report. And that's also um, obviously pretty powerful because again, you only need to set up things one time and you can set it up you know, in whatever, you have all the flexibility, it's just Python code. You can set it up in whatever works for you. And then um, you can have your users, for example, on their own um, add additional, additional funds. So this is, this is pretty much high level how, how, how it works. And um, okay, so I see there's a question, but it says for the end. So I'm gonna leave this right there. All right, so um, yeah, that's that's pretty much how, how it works from an end user's perspective, business user's perspective. Uh, the other side of things, which is uh, the 90 lines of Python code that I wrote, uh, I don't wanna spend too much time on it because uh, you have the the link to the to the repository, and maybe I can just um, maybe I can just paste it in the in the chat just to make sure that you can look at it. Right, so there it is. Um, so you can always go through the code online at your own pace and it's documented. It, it has an extensive readme there, but still uh, very quickly we can scroll through it. So basically, you know, the function that's being called from Excel is mostly just calling the pre-process function, the, the reporting function and the post-process function. That's pretty much it. Um, the pre-process is usually probably going to be the, the most extensive one. Uh, we have different sections here. We have the acquisition of or the loading of the CSV files with pandas. We have the loading of the Word file using Python docx. We have um, just uh, the read method here for text files to read the, the native uh, markdown file. Then we do some, you know, some pandas magic to get to get the total performance and we can use it in, in the introductory text on the left-hand side. So that's pretty much just a little, little show here to, you know, to give you a feeling of, of what, what happens typically in, in these pre-processing um, functions. Um, this here is, is also three lines of code to create your own like sort of uh, branded QR code. And then, yeah, basically you just give back these 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 um, these variables. That's the that's the data that we're sending to the Excel template, and then the actual uh, uh, you know the actual creation of the of the PDF report. That's just basically 
two lines of code. It's the call to create report and it's the call to, to PDF report. And at this point, um, I can also, um, you know, um, basically unveil the secret that causes the, the PDF report to have these pixel perfect headers and footers. And this comes basically here in the to PDF call, which allows you to select an existing PDF to print on. So print between quotes, but it's it's essentially what happens. So when we go back here to the um, to the directory of, of, of the demo, then you will see that I have a PDF file, which is called layout. And that's literally just an empty uh, corporate layout style PDF, um, you know, that you can probably get from your um, design department. And this is literally where the Excel workbook or the, the content from the Excel template is going to be printed on. And there's a couple of, um, you know, advantages you have by doing this approach. So you can easily have different layouts for each different page, or you can have the same layout for, for the whole, per, uh, for the whole uh, report. And um, if it's professional designed, um, which I would assume if it comes from your corporate um, design department, then these will also cause your, your PDF report to be very tiny in size because PDF you know, can reuse content. So like if you have the same logos and pictures on, on, on every page, then um, if you would just add them to each of your um, Excel templates, then that would sum up uh, very much in space, whereas here you can keep um, these reports really, really, really um, lean. So that's like how you end up having these uh, pixel perfect uh, reports that are otherwise pretty much impossible to do with Excel alone. That is because Excel um, scales often, you know, the output and then doesn't manage to print borderless on those pages. And I guess um, by, by, by having explained this, I pretty much um, have shown you the most important function. I mean, one of my favorite is obviously also these two lines here, which upload the, the PDF here to the web page as we have seen it in the live demo. That's just uh, well, two, two lines of code and, um, and yeah, nothing more you need to think about. And I believe that's not as easy as this if you use another uh, one of these tools that we have seen initially in the presentation. Um, and so before I get to, to the few questions that I see in the chat, um, I wanna go through a couple of last slides uh, just to make sure that everybody, um, you know, is on the same page in, in, in the way to understand like how everything works. And so, one important comment here I would like to make is that what I've just shown you, basically that um, that that Excel app where I was clicking that that green button, that's just one of many options we have to um, to 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 invoke or to run this this full pipeline. It's just well, I'm just most familiar with that uh, framework, so for me that was easy to build an easy uh, user interface, but. It's really just Python code, right? So uh, you can, for example, if, if your users are Jupyter Notebook fans, they use it up and down every day. They feel that's the thing they feel most comfortable with. You can obviously give them a Jupyter Notebook that they can run and it'll produce the same uh, reports. Another option, probably uh, I would I, I would expect like a, um, an important option is, is, is just have a native Python script or build a, a command line interface. And this will allow you to run things on a scheduler. So you don't need to go in and, and start the Excel and click the run button. You just schedule things on a weekly basis. You schedule things on a nightly basis and it'll pull the data from your, you know, uh, live database and just, uploads it as you saw automatically again to your server or sends out an email or whatever you want to do with the report. Um, that's definitely an, an important um, thing here. And then obviously you can also build a, a user interface using, you know, PyQt or some other uh, framework for that, or even um, use a web-based uh, a web-based dashboard, you could use Potly Dash to 
have the run button and 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 create reports for you. Uh, you can even uh, run things on a server, but importantly, it would have to be a Windows-based server where Excel is installed. So that's um, completely possible. It's definitely not the right thing to do if you have hundreds of users who you know get to the homepage and want to have things create in in real time. So that would put us more into a report lab corner. But if you have you know, reports that are generated once every hour on an irregular basis, then that's completely fine to do. And so, yeah, we're getting to the end of this presentation. Um, and I just wanted to go through the, the, so the sort of cornerstones of the, of the report framework again. And um, yeah, most importantly, it's about uh, separation of concerns. You can have a Python developer and they do the initial setup. And then from there on, the report designer who, who probably is a business user has and you know, can do a lot of things on their own. Uh, you, you just have one template, only one template. That means you just have to make fixes in one template. It doesn't get out of hand as it often does when you link it up with Word, let's say. You, you can take care of this multicom layout. Uh, we have an easy way to do apply formatting, something that's also cumbersome if you just you know work with Excel alone. And then we've seen um, a few times uh, the ability to just um, throw in your data frames into Excel as an Excel table. Um, it, it can be formatted as an Excel table, but it can also be just using the standard cell things, the, the standard cells formatted standard cells and the powerful filters there definitely are uh, worth looking at. Um, it, they allow you to also aggregate, um, aggregate, let's say small amounts into an other uh, row, something that's actually also done in, in the report demo um, that you can look at on, on GitHub. So there's quite a lot of powerful filters there. Um, then charts, uh, you can use the Excel charts. That's what I did in, in the demo. But uh, some people, they also prefer to use with, you know, work with Python based charts such as Matplotlib and Plotly. That's also completely possible. You can add them as a vector based graphics on your report. Um, and then finally, yeah, uh, probably also very, very strong feature is, is the, the print on, on PDF option there that guarantees a pixel perfect appearance and, and you know, just makes sure that uh, the report doesn't look like it comes from Excel. So this gets me sort of back to the um, to the beginning of the of, of the talk where I mentioned that I was looking for a way to fund the Excel Wings project and um, well coming from an open source background I tried to look for a pricing model that that you know seems fair to me and hopefully also to the users. Um, so what that means is basically that for below for below for less than a hundred dollars a month um, you can basically have your whole company run on excel wings reports and uh, the way that this 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 works is it's a developer license so only people who basically write python code they need a license and you can deploy it to basically your end users for free and even though it's a subscription once a subscription expires you can still continue to use the tool you just get no support and upgrades um, thereafter. Um, and for more details, um, I have to link here on the homepage. You can also just surf there. There's a, in the nav bar, you find the respective item. And so to conclude, and I will get to uh, the, the questions right after that is, um, well, how can you get started? There is, uh, a, there's a, a, you can get a free trial key and, and get started right away with trying things out. Um, under slash trial, um, then you can read the docs on, on the left-hand side on, on, on the excellence reports, uh, on the excellence docs, there is a section down there for the reports here. This, links, this link takes you there directly. And then finally, if you wanna you know, continue, like if you have um, issues or if you have like uh, personal questions that you wanna take care of, um, you can also go to my link here um, and book some time with me. And again, I allow to myself to just um, paste this in, in the chat and uh, feel free to 
continue the conversation there with me. So from my end, that was it. Um, last but not least, you know, always happy to connect on LinkedIn. Uh, again, feel free to, to reach out there. And um, at this point now, I am going to read through the questions and see um, if I can answer them. 